39. CPS Geometry Visualization, Discrete Complex Planes In the last few videos, we have proposed a way, of connecting the closed packed spheres, with the set of natural numbers. More precisely, this connection is done, by associating, the square of the distances of spheres, to the origin, with the corresponding natural number. As seen already, there are usually many spheres corresponding to a given natural number. Starting from these assumptions, we have seen how the CPS points, form, in a very natural way, plane patterns. All these CPS planes are in fact discrete, complex planes. The XOY plane is the discrete complex plane, associated with the simplest CPS plane. As stated before, this is the plane popularized by Gauss, following his investigations of the Gaussian primes. The real axis, and the imaginary axis of this plane, are two identical, and orthogonal CPS lines. The units of length, for these two lines, are equal with 1. The magnitudes, and the coordinates, of every point, k belonging to this plane, are related by, and obey the Fermat's theorem, on sums of two squares, and subsequently, the sum of two squares theorem. Any complex number, with the real part and imaginary part integers, belongs to this complex, discrete plane. The magnitudes, of these complex numbers are always, the square root of a natural number. But, it is important to note that, there are complex numbers, with a magnitude equal with the square root of some natural numbers, which cannot be represented in this plane. These are the numbers, identified by the sum of two squares theorem, that cannot be written as the sum of two squares. For example the numbers, 3, 7, 15, 127, cannot be written as sums of two squares. If, M, and, N, are two points, associated with two complex numbers, belonging to this discrete complex plane, then their sum, and their product, are also complex numbers belonging to this discrete complex plane. In other words, the points, or the complex numbers, belonging to this discrete, complex plane are closed under addition, and multiplication. Due to the fact that both coordinates, of all the points, in this discrete plane are integer numbers, one would expect this plane to be somehow unique, and or special. But why stop at this plane? Why not extend the investigations, into the properties, of all possible CPS planes, that exist, and can be identified, in the CPS space? The second plane which can be identified in the close packing of spheres arrangement, is the plane, orthogonal on the previous plane, and having the same real axis. The imaginary axis of this plane, is orthogonal on the initial plane. The CPS line, corresponding to this imaginary axis, has the unit of length, equal with, the square root of, 2. All points belonging to this discrete complex plane, can also be associated with complex numbers. The real parts, of these complex numbers, are integers. The imaginary parts, of these complex numbers, are multiples of, the square roots of 2. As expected, the addition, and multiplication, of complex numbers belonging to this discrete, complex plane, are complex numbers which also belong to this plane. With these considerations, the distribution of the CPS lines, corresponding to the CPS nodes, belonging to this CPS plane, are now completely understood. But, why consider only the vertical plane? determined by the real axis with the unit of length, equal with 1. 
any simple rotation, of the initial vertical plane, followed by the corresponding extension of the unit of length, of the real axis, generates new vertical planes. The real axis, of all these planes, always passes through some nodes of the horizontal plane. The unit of length, of the real axis, is given by the distance from the origin, to the first CPS node, located in the horizontal plane, which also belongs to the real axis. The real axis cannot have any unit of length imaginable. The units of length of the real axes of all these planes, are determined, and obey, the sum of two squares theorem. For more information on this theorem, see the previous videos in this series. As illustrated here, the sum of any two complex numbers, belonging to any such plane, is also a complex number, belonging to the same complex plane. The set of CPS nodes, belonging to these planes, are closed under addition. Due to the scale factors, the multiplication is not shown here. The CPS versions of the Brahmaguptas identities, provide the proof that the CPS nodes, belonging to these planes, are also closed under multiplication. Complex multiplications of numbers, belonging to these planes, show this clearly. For these planes, P, is equal with, 1. In this case, the classical form of the identities, can easily be spotted. For the general case, when both, P, and, Q, are different from 1, a multiplication factor is needed, to align the units of length of the axes. This multiplication operation is in fact a conformal mapping of one plane to another. As well known, any conformal mapping transformation preserves angles. Finally, this is the 3D visualization of a set of complex discrete planes, for the most general case. The unit of length, for the real axis, is equal with square root of, P. In general case, P, is not equal with 1. The unit of length, of the imaginary axis, is equal with the square root of, Q. Again, for the general case, Q is not equal with, 1 or, 2. Are these planes, all the plane patterns, that can be identified, in the close packing of spheres arrangement? The answer is, yes. We have shown already, that the CPS planes, with an underlining square lattice, have a periodicity of 2. The CPS lines, corresponding to the CPS nodes, located on odd CPS planes, will also have CPS points, located on even CPS planes. This follows from the repetition of the unit of length, on any CPS line.